All right, so we're pretty much done with sequences now. Um, we're ready to move on to series. Before we do, I want to show you one more, let's say, slightly more challenging example. This one has a sequence which is defined recursively, right? So we don't have a formula like most of the ones we've been dealing with so far. We just have some formula that says an is this function of n, right? And a lot of the time we can fall back on calculus techniques that we already have to understand what's going on. But this one is defined recursively, so we don't, we don't have a function that we work, can work with. So how do we find the limit of such a thing, right? I mean, you can start thinking about, like, what do the, what do the terms look like? You know, a1 is, is root 2. a2 is root 2 plus root 2. a3 is root 2 plus root 2 plus root 2, and so on. Is that even going anywhere? If so, where? Right? It's not at all clear. How do we figure this out? Well, we know that bounded monotone sequences converge. Okay? So one of the things that we can do is we start plugging values in, you know, put them in the calculator, you see what you get, you get some numbers out, right? By the time you get to like A4, it's starting getting complicated enough that maybe you don't want to put it into the calculator anymore. But you can try a few. And if you try a few, you find that you're getting numbers that are one point something, you know, they seem to be hovering a little bit below two. So you might guess that two is an upper bound. So that would be the first claim. So we're going to claim that a n is less than or equal to 2 for all values of n. Well, how do you show that? How do you show that a n is going to be less than or equal to 2 for all values of n? It's a little tricky, right? How do you deal with this recursively defined thing? Um, you could look at the difference, you know, 2 minus a n. Can we do anything with that? Let's see. I mean, 2 minus a n is, well, what can I even say about a n? Um, I don't know. I can say it's like, well, I'm sorry. 2 should go on the inside. I can you know, put the square root of a n minus 1. Um, does that get me anywhere? I want to show that this is positive. Right? I want to show that this is less than 2. So I want to show that, that 2 minus a n is bigger than 0. Not at all clear. I could try rationalizing. Does rationalize get me anywhere? Um, we are going to go somewhere. Don't worry. All right? We get 2 minus there. And then we get you know 2 plus that square root on the bottom. And, okay, you can simplify, those cancel, that's a plus. Um, but you still feel like maybe you're stalled. So, how do you proceed? Well, the right way to do this is you proceed using a technique called induction. So we're going to proceed by induction. Okay, so induction on n. So the way this looks is we say, okay, so first of all, we know that a1 is less than 2, right? Because a1 is the square root of 2, we know that the square root of 2 is less than 2. Okay? Two, we're going to suppose, suppose we know that some ak is less than or equal to two, right? Actually, we do. We know what when k is equal to one, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to imagine, well, maybe, maybe we also know this for some other values of k, two, three, four. We don't yet, but suppose we did. Um, 
So the next step is we say, well, if we know that, can we show that ak plus 1 is less than or equal to 2? Um, this, is, this is how an induction argument works. Now, we're going to do it. Before we do it, let's point out why it works. Why does this work? Well, essentially, what you're showing here is you're showing this implication, right? You're showing that if this is less than or equal to 2, then the next one will be less than or equal to 2. So we have this implication going like that. We know a1 is less than or equal to 2. So this is true when k is equal to 1. Um, but if the hypothesis of a conditional is true, so is the conclusion. So we know that a1 is less than or equal to 2, therefore a2 is less than or equal to 2. But now we come back, right? a2 is less than or equal to 2, therefore a3 is less than or equal to 2. Since a3 is less than or equal to 2, a4 is less than or equal to 2, and so on. So we just kind of get into this, this loop and we generate all the other possibilities. So it remains to show that if ak is less than or equal to 2, then ak plus 1 should be less than or equal to 2. Uh, well, why is that true? Um, if we assume ak is less than or equal to 2, well, then we get that ak plus 1 is, well, by definition, it's 2 plus square root of 2 plus ak, right? Oh, but we've assumed that ak is less than or equal to 2. So this must be less than or equal to the square root of 2 plus 2, right? Replace ak by something bigger. Uh, but 2 plus 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is ah, 2. Okay. And that means that an is less than or equal to 2 for all natural numbers n using this technique of induction. Very good. OK. So now we want to show that, so we've shown it's bounded. Now we want to show that it's monotone. OK. So I'm going to claim that a n is less than or equal to a n plus 1 for all n. I want to show that it's increasing. OK. And so we could, we could try something like this. We could try playing around with differences. And you know I think you can sort of get something to work doing it that way. Um, you can look at the difference. You can put in the definition. I mean, let's, let's check quickly and see what happens. If I do the difference, a n plus 1 minus a n, um, well, that's root 2 plus a n minus a n. Rationalize, I get uh, it's going to be 2 plus a n um, oh, well, you know, this isn't so great either, right? Because if I rationalize, I get 2 plus a n, and I get minus a n squared over, okay. The, that doesn't seem ideal. Um, okay, so we, we scratch that, so that doesn't seem to be working. Um, let's try induction again. Can we do it by induction? Um, if n is equal to 1, so we have, kind of, we have a starting point, right? What's the base case? So if n is equal to 1, is it true that a1 is less than or equal to a2? Well, let's see. Um, we know what a1 is. a2 is the square root of 2 plus a1. OK. And let's see. Well, we know that a1 is certainly bigger than 0, right? So this is bigger than simply root 2. And root 2 is a1. OK. Got that. Um, so now if we suppose, assume that ak is less than or equal to ak plus 1 for some k. Well, then what would be the next step? So the next step, if we would, if we would assume this here, right, we increment by 1, right? Going from 2 to 3, we increment by 1. So we want to show, the next step would be to show that ak plus 2 is bigger than or equal to ak plus 1. So we say, OK, ak plus 2. By definition, it's 2 plus ak plus 1. 
Um, oh, but we've assumed that ak plus 1 is bigger than or equal to ak. Ah, but root of 2 plus ak, that's ak plus 1. Done. Okay, so using this technique of induction, we can show that it's bounded above by 2. We can show that it's increasing. Okay, so it's increasing, it's bounded above. It has to have a limit. We have a theorem that says the limit is guaranteed. Okay, so how do we find that limit now that we know it exists? Well, here's a, here's a sneaky trick. We have this equality, right? Let's take the limit of both sides. Limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 should be equal to the limit. Well, I got a little bit ahead of myself, but let me, let's do it. I've already wrote the square root. You can bring the limit inside the square root because square root function is continuous. Okay? And the kicker here is that this limit, okay, that's L, right? L is the limit as n goes to infinity of a n. But, I mean, that's going to be the same limit here, right? Because here you're just incrementing by 1. You get to the same place. If n is going to infinity, so is n plus 1. So L is equal to the square root of 2 plus L. Got to solve for L. Square both sides. L squared is 2 plus L. So L squared minus L minus 2 is 0. Uh, so let's see. L minus 2, L plus 1. Two possibilities for the limit. Well, it's certainly not minus 1 because all of the terms are positive. So looks like the limit should be 2.